I haven't been in this part of the world in oh 18 months oh oh are we doing two museums today uh woo! are we living that type of life i don't know i think we are two museums one day let's get ready to get ready Look at this. It's the family vault of uh, W. White Robert Morris. Robert Morris, one of the most unknown, important founding fathers in, in the world. Right? See that guy right there? France paid for like eight out of the ten bullets for the American Revolution. And uh, he paid for one of the other ones. And, you know, they, they got money out of it. Look at this. Uh-oh. Christ Church. It's open. I think it's been open. If you look at that, you see that? Hold on, look at this. You see that baptismal? Inside that baptismal is a marble bowl. Marble bowl. Well, that's a hard thing to say. And that's the same baptismal fount that baptized William Penn and I think it's dated back to like 1490-something. That's uh this is a signer of the Declaration of Independence. It's very, I mean, look, look. Uh, this is a signer of the Constitution, Pierce Butler. I guess signers of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution confused. You know how it goes. I'm sure everybody, not everybody. And this is, oh, this is like, that's a, the Christ Church steeple. That is the steeple that uh, Ben Franklin got that steeple installed. Uh, he owned a newspaper. And in that newspaper, he held a lottery. And with the funds they made from that lottery, they built that steeple. That's pretty uh, cool. Uh, ben Franklin, Franklin went to church here. Betsy Ross went to church here. George Washington, GW as we call him, he went to church here. William Penn's grandson's buried underneath the ground. Bishop White, the bishop of the founding father, sort of, kind of. He's buried here. You know what's funny? I didn't even want to start the video here. I went to start the video here because here we are, folks. I decided I'm going to make a declaration. Two minutes and 30 seconds into this video. I'm going to make a declaration. This right here is Filbert Street. Look at that. That's what the sign says. It says Filbert. Okay, we're gonna unzoom, turn around, right? And then I'm gonna say, look, uh, this was always one of my favorite streets. And then I just realized something. And now it really is my favorite street. Good thing about this street, cars can't drive down it. So don't worry, that car can't hit me. The street's teeny tiny. Look at this. I always, me and my, whenever I take people around, like walking around down here, I always take them down the street. It reminds me, if you look up there, reminds me of Little Shop of Horrors. I don't know, it has like a a weird vibe. Like I could just see the neighbors yelling at each other across the fire escape. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about this. And if you took that walk in history tour with me, you know what this is. It's a blue brick street. I think there's only eight of them in the city. And the, the story is, look at this, they want some privacy. Uh, and the story is, uh, in 1876, there was a centennial ceremony. Oh, I just, we gotta get the escape, or the leaving, not the escape, we're not held hostage here. But look, isn't that awesome? And then you get right down here, this is, uh, oh, Third Street, right? Let's say Third. Yeah, third, North Third Street. And uh, so anyway, there was a, a centennial and they had all these buildings built for the centennial. And it's kind of like a World's Fair type thing. And when they knocked down a few buildings that they didn't need uh, anymore, but instead of just throwing the bricks out, very conscious environment. Oh, we're just, we're just gonna talk, John. It's not that hard to talk. Very environmentally conscious people back in the day. 
they said, hey, let's not throw out the bricks. Let's pave the street with blue bricks. So if you ever see a blue brick street, uh, just know you're walking on top of the World's Fair. Uh-oh. And right now, what we're doing today, buckle in. We're going to do the National Liberty Museum, I think. Let's get ready to get ready to go to a museum of glass, religious stuff. Uh, there's a bootleg copy of the Liberty Bell. That's a uh, pretty amazing gazebo. I think this museum's usually 10 bucks. It's in Mandela. And this is the size of his jail cell that he stayed in for 30 years. Wow. On a wall they have labeled inspiration. Look at this. Jimmy Eisenreich, there he is, big time. He was like the first famous person I know to have Tourette's syndrome, remember that? Jim Eisenreich, very excited. Rule one, sanitize hands. Here you go, watch this. Yeah, I, I, rule number one, I can't even do it. All right, let's say. So you, I, I'm taking a risk, but I'm saying that. Okay. So you touch this. Step up and touch the ring to keep the flame of liberty ignited. This is what the Liberty Bell would sound like. Same material, same size, same everything. Same everything. You hear that? That sounds like freedom. So that's, uh, that's the National Liberty Museum. It's okay. It's not that good. It's not that, I mean, it's fun. another museum. Is this open? Uh oh, yo! Oh, shit! I haven't been in this part of the world in, oh, 18 months? Oh, oh, are we doing two museums today? Ah, uh, woo! Are we living that type of life? I don't know, I think we are. Two museums one day. Let's get ready to get ready. Last step foot on this property. Look at this, oh. There it is, that's the house of Ben Franklin. Not really the house, more of a ghost house. This is what his house would have like, look, liked. This is what his house would have looked like. Pretty big house. If you look right there, those are properties Franklin owns and they're, they're row homes. Very, very teeny tiny. This house is about the size of four of those houses. All right, so here we are. Ben Franklin Museum. Pretty much, it's the greatest museum in the world. So if you look, take a peek, watch. The museum. The museum itself is tiny. It's only five bucks to get in here, but they do have some uh, pretty interesting things. Let me show you. Ben Franklin was the postmaster general. So what he was doing, he came up with this idea. He was trying to figure out the best way to have direct routes for the mail trucks or horse and buggies, not mail trucks, because they weren't invented yet. And this is one of the original Kind of like an odometer. Look at this. One of the 
original kind of, this is what he used to figure out the postal routes. <laughs> Oh, what's going on? But that guy better leave my boy alone. I'll chop right up your ass. I don't care what you say. Yeah, get old, get, you better disappear. I got you, Ben. As you know, Ben Franklin started the first fire companies, right? And this, this is one of the fire buckets. If you had a home in Philadelphia, you would have to keep a bucket like that near your front door just in case a fire broke out on your block. And these are uh, air pumps that Franklin used to generate electricity. Uh, these are from like the 70s. He, he was a, he, he really thought he had a good time with electricity. He liked to electrocute stuff himself, his friends. He thought it was fun. <laughs> this is probably the greatest invention of all time. This is called the divided soup bowl. So Ben, when you would ride on a boat and you would drink a bowl of soup, it would spill all over the place. So Ben Franklin came up with this idea. Look how big this bowl is. <laughs> And then, uh, like, this is my hand, so so what you do is you get a bowl of soup, and when, when the uh, boat would rock, the soup would spill into these little bowls, and that way you uh, wouldn't spill your soup. And this is uh, Ben Franklin's Bible from 1763. He uh, had it inscribed to his daughter. He was supposed to give it to her, or maybe he did give it to her, Deborah. Or, yeah, wait. yeah, Deborah. Deborah Sarah was the, uh, no, it doesn't matter. So anyway, that was Ben Franklin's Bible. And uh, this is a glass harmonica. See that right there? This used to be on display at the Franklin Institute, I think. I remember seeing this as a kid. Um, they still use it to make songs today. Uh, I don't know the Harry Potter theme song, but I know they make the Harry Potter theme song with this. Listen. Ink balls. There they are. What they would use. See this? You get this. And then you get a piece of paper and you just beat the shit out of it. And you get this here. Right? And these are uh, bifocals from the 1790s. Ben Franklin invented bifocals. All right. Well, I guess that's it. That's uh, that's the Ben Franklin Museum. I don't. I, I think I've been here for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. It's the 4th of July. You got to go see Ben Frank. Oh, I'm at, I'm at Independence Hall on 4th of July week. I'm a goddamn idiot. I just realized that. Hey, if you like this video, do me a favor. Hit the thumbs up, and while you're at it, hit subscribe. Don't forget to check out my merch. My merch is fire. If you want to help me out, pay for me to go to a museum. Give me some money. Sign up for Patreon. And if you want to help, I, did, I just said that. Well, hit like and subscribe, and I'll sail with you later. Toodles!